Hey man, it's time for the talking chip. It's time for the talking chip podcast, man. This is a special episode right here, man. We gonna have some fun with it, man. We got Black Hebrew Israelite in the building, Marcus, man. Introduce our guest today, my brother. Well, it's the it's one of the one and only uh, one of my favorite light skinned ninjas of all time. You know, mm-hmm. uh, wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out, man. I told you, man. Nigga is okay to say, man. That is a clean word. Well. I mean, but but t- the problem is, is I still got 56K modem in my head. You know what I mean? I'm still stuck on it. <laughs> you know? But like you said, I mean, Corey Dewberry, uh, you know, he's he's somebody I can look at and, and as one of my childhood friends. And I can say, you know, he's always been somebody I looked up to uh, since day one, you know. And so this is a real special episode you know, to have them on and things of that sort, especially uh, living in confusing and great times right now. Right. So here we go, Corey Dewberry, straight up. Right. My man. Hey, well, first and foremost, I want to say Shalom. Uh, I know Hayden ain't been around me for a while. My name ain't been Corey Dewberry for some years now, bro. I yeah, that man hit you with the Malcolm. He hit you with the, the Muhammad Ali all day, man. Hey, <laughs> yeah, man. bro. Why not? Why not? Why not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I changed my name when I found out my nationality, where I found out where my father's come from. So, uh, and I sent Ancestor. you a message. Com, brother. I'm sorry? Ancestor, by way of Ancestor.com. Hell no, not by Ancestry.com. <laughs> Listen, the white folks is telling y'all where y'all come from. If y'all pay attention, you actually see the real agenda behind that whole, and I did it. I did Ancestry as well, but uh, that's a whole nother topic. But anyhow, I changed my I changed my name when I found out my father's descent from the men in this Bible. So my name is Abiel uh, Kanai Ben Israel. You can just call me Abiel. Um, man, it's been shoot since two thousand and six, bro. So it's been a minute, Mister Hayden. It's been a minute. Oh, all right. We still there? Yeah, uh, we live. You good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, but no, I'm um, so I'm a deacon with Israel United in Christ. I'm not sure if y'all ever heard of my organization. Uh, we kicking up a whole lot of funk in Babylon today, man. I know y'all may have heard of um, some of the churches being upset. We was actually in the news here in OKC because one of the churches was mad because we outside asking asking biblical questions with people that's supposed to believe the Bible, that say that they love God, they love the words of the, of the Lord. And we asking biblical questions and for some reason we can't get any answers. Um, a lot of times when you see black men stand up along with Hispanic, what we call today Hispanic men, Native American men, when you see us coming together, all of a sudden now it's a problem, it's an issue. Um, our roots go way before what we call the Americas, okay? So what we teach is what you know today as Hispanics, Natives, Blacks, I'm talking about those scattered throughout the four corners in Haiti, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, uh, Island of Dominica, um, all throughout Central, North, South and America, they are the children of Israel. The indigenous people are the Israelites and we can show you how they got there. We can show you what happened to them and we can go into the history proving who we are from, from the scriptures. Uh, a lot of things have been distorted over time. We've had a whole lot of people come and try to tell us what our nationality is. Even amongst our so-called leaders, they've tried to name us and 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 call us different names. Like prior to Jesse Jackson, we wasn't African Americans. Uh, Jesse took yeah. it upon himself. Yeah, to but, say, but hey, I'm sorry, brother ABL. Yeah, we never we never uh, anointed him. We never voted for him for anything. Right. Who did? I don't, know, who was I don't know who appointed him as the leader. Exactly. But, but they're they're self appointed. And that's the problem. We have self-appointed leaders amongst our people who are, are speaking for us and they're not the voice of us. So again, what we try to do is we try to bring our people back to their heritage and everything is scriptural. Now I know because of what's happened here in Babylon, here in America, um, a lot of our people have turned away from the Bible. And the reason being has been taught from a, Euro, a Eurocentric perspective and point of view instead of actually how it's written. Here it is, the Bible's the best-selling number one book in the world, and it's the most unread, the most unresearched. How is that? We read about all these beautiful Black people in the Bible, and for some reason, our history is still hidden. So our job is to bring this knowledge to our people. And another thing, let me say this. We are not Black Hebrew Israelites. 
Uh-oh. I, know, I know that term has been dubbed and white folks are the ones that called us that. But that's th- that's like saying black, which I'm saying this from a perspective of somebody who thinks they're African-American, black African-American Negro. Like that don't make any sense. The Israelites are black. There's no need to put a black in front of it. The Israelites are black. OK, when I say black, I'm talking about people of color. Because if you ask me, Native Americans is black. Uh, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, they black. Yeah. Same thing, uh, people of color. So the who, the who is black? Who, who are the people black? Native Americans. Whoa. Mexicans. Hey man, you live in OKC? You still living in color. OKC? Yes, you still sir. living in OKC? Mm-hmm. Well, you gonna get a, you gonna get scalped for saying that out there, man. <laughs> you, 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 know it's, you know it's a lot of pale Indian chiefs. I ain't talking about them five dollar Indians, bro. Don't uh, be I, don't get me started on them fakers, bro. I ain't oh, talking about the, the pretenders. Hey, I'm no, talking my, my, about the real my ones. I was done game banging, man. I was done game. And <laughs> hey, this how we get it though on the show, man. Man, we going blood raw, man. Giving it to y'all live, man. At the end of the day, but listen, brother, I I, I like where you coming from because I got questions. You know what I'm saying? I've been on I've been on a rampant tear of uh, ancestral search. Recently, mm. utilizing Ancestor.com, I ain't going to cap. You know what I'm saying? I don't spit in a little plastic tube and send it off to them. And they don't they don't came back and chop me up like sushi and said that mm-hmm. I'm part this, part that. Possibly. Because mm-hmm. if you read it right, you read it right. It's not telling you that's what you are. It's saying that it's a high percentage mm-hmm. probability of the region that you may have stemmed from. Um, but ultimately you know and also speaking with some native americans hearing their viewpoint and just hearing them trying to drive home the head of uh y'all slaves i mean nowhere on my uh timeline through ancestral reports that i can find that anybody in my family was a slave and in the last 200 plus years that i've been able to track back so it's a head scratcher that uh a lot of the folklore in the storytelling of, of, of whatever region you may come from, whether it's America, whether it's uh, Europe, or whatever the case may be, somebody always wanna uh, kick up the dust about this uh, slave trade situation, which and the numbers, the probabilities of numbers can't even be remotely close because at the end of the day, who maintaining a million people? Right. Because one thing you gotta know for sure, if you got slaves, you got to take care of your slaves better than you take care of your family. Because if that's your quote unquote livestock, that's helping you turn dollars, turn currency. You got to make sure they well fed, mm-hmm. they ready to go, yada yada yada. But on this biblical note, though, man, yeah, let's get it, man. Let's dig in. Let's well, dig in, but, man. Is but, Jesus I, white? Well, hold on. I have one more question. Uh, you know, my my biggest thing is. Uh, if we can kind of tone down the rhetoric and, and get out of Wakanda, you know, uh, with this uh, feel good, say so stuff, because, you know, there was a guy in Jamestown, uh, I mean, excuse me, Jonestown, I'm not quite sure what he called it, but I know it was started off as a Pentecostal church, and then all of a sudden we end up in the jungle and we're driving away, right? Mm, right. Oh, you didn't got caressed. <laughs> well, I, I, mean, I mean, I don't know how exactly we, I mean, I know it's hoorah going on right now and it's all good, my brother, but yeah, I'm, I'm get around. It, it kind of sounds too good to be true. Yes, sir. Well, this is the thing. Real quick, give me that in uh, Corinthians. I, I, I would say I'm hey, hey, somebody in the background, man. Yeah. Hey, turn, turn your background down, brother. Second Corinthians ten and five. There. Second Corinthians chapter ten and verse five. I want I want y'all to check something out real quick. Go ahead. All right, all right let's go. Imaginations mm-hmm. and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So our job as the true prophets, the true leaders of this nation, is to cast down imaginations, right? Like the brother just brought out about how you got a lot of cultic uh, movements going on. And a lot of them is spearheaded using the Bible. 
people come to this book and they say, see, I'm your leader. I'm your holy one. Listen to me. Follow me. I'm the one. Right. But when you read the Bible, that's not that's not the temperament of a believer. A believer doesn't look out just to follow someone, a leader or a person that's really trying to do what God says. They just want to make it to the kingdom of heaven. When they we realize something's going to happen after we die. Right. A lot of us have come to that understanding. Some of us have come to the point where we think, well, nothing's going to happen when we die. Well, that's where you stand. At the end of the day, we understand that, you know what, if I do what I'm supposed to do and I keep God's commandments and faith in his son, I'm going to inherit the kingdom of heaven because of the words that I read. What's happened is a lot of people have taken this Bible now and they use it to their benefit. For example, the same question we ask these churches, we say, where in the Bible does it say you got to give 10% of your income to the pastor? Matter of fact, tell your listeners right now, I got $10,000 for the man or woman that could show me in the Bible where God, Christ, or anyone said, bring me 10% of your money. Where is that? Where is that in the scripture? We got Google, right? Ain't there Google? We got Google search. Where does it say bring 10% of your money? And this goes back to the issue that I have with the culture. The culture says, yeah, just go to church and say you believe in God, give them 10% of your money and you're all right. The culture has been misguided through miseducation. We ain't doing what is imperative for actually understanding the Bible. And that's reading it. That's actually going to the scripture and reading it and doing what it says. Anybody, did anybody respond yet? Anybody reply? 10, 10 grand for the man or woman that can show me where it says in the Bible to give 10% of your money to the priest, to the pastor. Well, it, it kind of sounds, it kind of sounds like a, uh, a, a taxation code for like a post uh, Roman type of society. Mm, 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 they did it. You had other societies that did it before then. They were doing it in the Syrian captivity. You had different, diff the, the whole taxation came uh way before the americas before all that but the question is in the scriptures where do you read any of that it's not in there and because of our poor scholarship when it comes to studying this bible we just believe what pastors say oh he sound good like you were saying i'm going coming back to your point mr hayden oh man you know here it is you got the spiritual leader and next you know you find yourself in the in the in the woods somewhere talking about oh god oh my god not realizing you following that man you ain't following God. Anybody that just goes to this Bible or comes to someone just believe in them just based on their words is a fool. Give me that, Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17 and 5. You'd be a dummy just to believe somebody based on how good or how eloquent they speak. You'd have to be out your damn mind. You got that? Well, I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm gonna tell you, you know, you coming in, you hitting home. And you asking some thorough questions, man, as far as the 10% rule. Um, I, I've always questioned that. And um, as far as where can you find it scripture wise, mm -hmm. mm, it may not be there. I think it may be a man made, man made, uh, 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 imposed mm. situation that people started to abide by over time. Mm. Um, like Christmas. No, like like 1913 income taxation. That's okay, and that's where it was incorporated from. You're absolutely right. They are using things from the man, from white folks, and they're trying to infuse it with the Bible. Like I said, like Christmas, that came from white folk. Well, if you actually want to go back, that came from Nimrod. But the point is, is that these are pagan customs and traditions that have been infused into the Bible that are not biblical. It's not so biblical. I get I take it you don't you don't fellowship with the Mezzanites that much. No, sir. <laughs> hey, but, hey, but, but, if, but I like to go swimming in man-made lakes, not the ocean. Mm. Mm. Same thing. Same thing. It's a creation of man. Man made it up, like giving 10% to your pastor. Like, I don't know, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Thanksgiving. Thank, we still celebrating Thanksgiving in 2022. That is the that is the most disrespectful <laughs> holiday that I could think of today. Y'all are not nah, 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 brother. Y'all are. But, but shark bites are up. Shark bites are up right now. <laughs> hey, bro. Listen, man. What, what do we? My man said, not I. Watch this. How do you not see Thanksgiving as being disrespectful? 
Well, no, 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 no. I'm saying I don't celebrate. I, oh, oh okay, I, okay. Cool. You know what I tell people? I tell people all the time in my household, okay, I'm 44 years old, so I don't have 40 plus Thanksgiving turkey days, and, and, and I travel a lot, so there is no need for me to sit around and run and chase a piece of turkey with some gravy and stuff. And when I can go to uh, Golden Corral and that's on the menu like every other day, I'm trying mm -hmm. to tell you. So well, if you if you if you that hard up for some some turkey and fixings, something wrong with you in this era. If mm -hmm. from 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 that standpoint now, as far as the closeness of uh, trying to build with the family, that's a little different. But ninety percent of ninety percent of us aren't even building with family because look left, right, up and down, and show me how many people that are actually in involved in a corporate affair with anybody within their own family trying to build something extensively, not just for money. Mm -hmm. but to make sure that the legacy extends further. Right. Well, but I think one of the problems is, is perhaps what if there was more people who believe what you're saying is to be true. And, and what I'm saying with a man-made lake, at least I know I'm in a secure area uh, of wildlife uh, in certain dangers, rather than swimming in a natural ocean where I can easily be swept away and, qu and kept under the water drowning in death. You know what? That's uh, that's not true. What do you mean? Let me tell you why that's not true. Right? Most of these man-made situations are created by the mezzanites in concentration where they've already uh, uh, flipped worship grounds, sacred worship grounds, burial grounds. Mm -hmm. And they pretty much have corralled locations in specific to keep an eye on you. What could happen to you there? You say you can't be you can't be whisked off in the water because you think it's a safer channel. You don't know what's in that waterfront. At the end of the day, because serpents come from many different ways all up and down through the bushes. I'm sitting outside yesterday and I'm thinking we in a safe zone and I look over and I see five daddy long legs. Well, or I could go to the hospital at Blue Cross, Blue Shield. <laughs> right? Is it? Yeah, Blue, yeah, Blue Cross. Blue. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, no, no. You, you can go to Mount Sinai. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So watch this. Let me ask y'all this then, Mr. Hayden. Would you prefer me to make a man-made lake and lie to you and tell you that it's natural? Or would you would you prefer to know that it's a man-made lake and know the truth concerning the man-made lake and make your decision concerning that lake from that point? Call it a reservoir. You said call it a reservoir, right? Yeah. What's the truth? What is it? Well, whatever makes my kids feel good is the truth. That's the problem that I have with black culture. What's oh. happened is, and like the brother is saying concerning um, what, what people with the man-made influence, what's happened is we're buying in to the, to the economic stimulus that they're giving us round of the year, whether it be Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, whatever holidays they got us spending money throughout the year. My issue is, our culture is being affected because we are not coming back to our cultural days and our, our actual holy days in following the law, statutes, and commandments. We have real holidays that's actually in the Bible. Why is it not one holiday is found in the scriptures that our people worship today? Why is that? Well, it, what you talking about, Kwanzaa? Kwanzaa ain't in the scriptures. <laughs> okay. That's another man-made holiday. That ain't in the scriptures. God didn't give us Kwanzaa. But he did give us Passover. He gave us the high holy days, the, the new moons, the Sabbath day. He gave us Feast of Tabernacles. He gave us Day of Atonement. He gave us many high holy days. There's actually more holy days, not holidays, holy days in the Bible that's to be celebrated than man today has given us. Well, so what's wrong with God's days? And why do we call those days after the name of God when God didn't ordain that? Listen, brother, I worked for the cartel for a long time, right? And what you describing to me, you describing Judaism, you describing Hebrew holidays mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they call them Jewish down there in Florida where I was representing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Day of Atonement. So watch uh, this. What I'm, if I told you you're the Hebrew, whoa. that you're the Jew, that well, you're not African American, these man made uh, nationalities, that God called you an Israelite? That's where you come from. And these are the days that you're supposed to be keeping. Mm. So what I mean, so what do I gotta do? I gotta, I mean, I filled out a lot of a lot of forms the wrong way. I mean, do all those people back or how does that work? Well, this is the thing, bro. We have been miseducated. We haven't been taught our heritage. We look it in all the wrong places for where we come from. Ask the, the typical black man today, ask him his nationality. And you, if you ask five different people, you're probably going to get five different answers. You got people who say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the, uh, give me one of them, the new ones. Asiatic black man. <laughs> More, right. Moorish. Here it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got Moorish America. I seen the brother with the, with the, with the Moorish pick in the, in the beginning, which he was an Israelite. He was a Jew. Same thing with uh, African American, Negro. Hell, I ask people today, and I'm talking about church folks. For some reason, when I ask church folks their nationality, they tell me their denomination. I'm Pentecostal. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, that's a tough one. Never heard that one. I've heard, like I said, we we get this stuff all the time, and it's, it's it's typically you know done from a perspective of okay, I'm telling you what I feel, what I think, but when you understand scripturally, the answer is there: who we are, who we descend from. We just got to pick up the book and go look. That's it. So you saying the scene black is right? Say it again. So you're saying the scene black is right. The scene black is right. What you mean? Nassim, Nassim, Nassim Black. You ever heard of him? No. You ever heard of him? Tell your man to research him while you on with us, though, man. Nassim Black. Is he a Hebrew? That's 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 the black, that's the well, that's the black Hebrew rapper over living over in Israel that was from Washington State that relocated and moved. Yeah, heavy set brother. Yeah, yeah, to the West Bank. I know who that. I know who you're talking about. He yeah. listen. From what I, I could be wrong. Like I said, I don't ever want to speak on something that I don't know of. But from my understanding, he's following, like you said earlier, Judea, uh, Judaism. He's following uh, the white man. He believes he's basically infused or he uh, converted to being a Jew. Oh yeah. You don't convert to your nationality. It's <laughs> impossible. How the hell do you convert to where you come from, to your heritage? Oh, yeah. Ain't no conversion. Hey, hey, you're speaking some strong things because if you're the true Israelite, I mean, you, that mean the blacks would be the true chosen people. Uh oh. And, and then the people that call themselves Jews are imposters and <laughs> they're taking a lot of things that don't belong to them. Uh oh, hey, my man will get us shut down. He gonna get us shut down. <laughs> hey, listen. That's what we're here for. That's let's just hey, for. let's just say, I don't know. Let's just say from, from, I, just, from I just wanted to listen for a while before, nah, I, before no I don't worry. That in <laughs> Imagine, <laughs> hey, check this out. Imagine the irony in this thing. The people yeah. whom the world has shitted on for so and excuse my French, y'all. I, I, I speak no, you can that's, say what you want to fucking say, say on this say, show. Say it the right way. That's the way you gotta say it. Watch that's this. the way you gotta the, say it. The people that the world has shitted on for so long that the world said was nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the last hire, the first fired. We're talking about the people with inferior health care, inferior schooling, bottom of society, bottom of the totem pole. Imagine if those people were actually the chosen people of God. Imagine that the imagine the, how the world now will look, how they treated these black folks, these natives, how they treated these people for so long. Imagine at the end of the day, they find out that those people are the chosen ones. Watch this. Let me read something. This is Revelation 2 and 9. But let me go once you're done. No worries, no worries. I want to read something real quick. Watch this. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Read. I know thy works Mm -hmm. and tribulation. God says he knows our works and our tribulation, all that we're going through. Look 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 at our society today. Look at our culture today. He knows it all we've been through. Read. And poverty. And poverty. Who is in the slums and in the ghettos? If you look up that definition, ghetto, it is a place where Jews are forced to reside. Ain't that irony? Read. But thou art rich. God says, but you are rich, read. And I know the blasphemy Mm. of them 
which say they are Jews. Wait, God said he knows the blasphemy, meaning the lies of those folks that say they are Jews, read. And are not. And are what? And are not. And are not. God says he knows the blasphemy of those folks over there right now. Who's saying that they're the Jew? Who's the one saying that they are the descendant of Judah? That's where that word Jew come from. Who are okay. saying they're the Judites today? The white man over in Israel. And they only been there since what, 1948? They did. They, why is it whenever we say we the Jews, blacks say we the Jews, we got to prove it. But white folks didn't have to prove it when they went over there and took and possessed the land in 1948. Why we got to prove it now, which we can. Read uh, three and nine. Revelation chapter three and verse nine. Come on. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Uh oh, this doesn't fit with society right now. God calls these people the synagogue of Satan, read. Which say they are Jews. Which say they are Jews. And are not. Read. But do lie. But what? But do lie. But do lie. God says those folks that say they are Jews, but do lie. He going what? Behold, I will make them come and, wor and, and worship before thy feet. He going to make them come and worship before our feet. So listen. Somebody got some explaining to do because the people calling themselves Jews today are imposters, like my man said. They are not the people of the book. They don't even fit the description of the people in the book, nor do they fit the curses written in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. So why are we reverence these people as the Israelites? Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. But well, also, but hey, also, what wait, wait, T. I appreciate your Kanye little box that you got over there. You got a little box that Kanye put the last album out on that's reading them Bible verses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real person. I'm a real person. <laughs> oh, he yeah, okay. You read. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah. Hey, but wouldn't those things go? Let's, I mean, we know how many parables it is in the Bible, right? Wouldn't those things go with Exodus? What those people were going through before they were delivered to the land of milk and honey? Also, wouldn't that go with Jesus? Where was he born? He was born in a major with animals full of shit. And then he was exalted to being a king. So how, how wouldn't that go exactly with what blacks are going through today? That's the, that's the exact curve with all mm. those. Absolutely. Watch this. What if I told you like, so you brought up Egypt. What if I told you that after they came out of Egypt, a lot of people don't know this history. You're supposed to know where you come from. Yeah. After Egypt, God told the Israelites, he said, listen, I'm giving you law, statutes, and commandments. He said, I've chosen you above all people upon the face of the earth. He said, if you keep my commandments, this is going to happen. But if you break and don't keep my commandments, this is going to happen to you. What if I told you God said that if the Israelites didn't do what he said, he was going to send them into slavery with slave ships? Ship. Slave ships. Now, let me ask you something. Who, else, who on the face of the planet did that happen to? Other than us. Nobody but us. Nobody but us. Watch this. I want to read because I don't, I, don't, I don't like doing the whole touch thing where you in church and the pastor is talking and he sound good. He sound enlightened and you don't get it from the actual source. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Read verse 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Read. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, mm -hmm. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Most High said, if we don't keep these laws... These curses are going to come upon us and overtake us. Real quick, read verse 46. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 46. Come on. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So he said, these curses were going to be upon you for a sign. A sign is identification mark. These curses would be upon the children of Israel for a sign to identify them. Read. And for a wonder. And for a wonder. And upon thy seed. Forever. Everybody to this day wonders why are black people in the state that we in now? They think we savages. They think we animals because of what we're going through and how we've been how we've been treated. They're like, man, you can't put nothing past them. Right. Here it is. They done did this and into that. The, nobody ever asked the question why. They do psychological. Uh, they do psychological evaluations 
over the effects of slavery and how, how it takes on black people today. But nobody ever does a psychological evaluation on the people that were able to do it. Right. Hey, but you know what's who, amazing? Who evaluated the guy that was able to hang somebody from a tree? Who evaluated the man that could split open a, a pregnant woman's belly and stomp out the child as the child falls to the ground? Who evaluated him and his descendants? I like that. I like that, brother. Listen, I like what you're saying, and I'm 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 a piggyback on that because who could take their children to eat ice cream and popcorn and stand out there and watch gleefully as they see people eyeballs popping out their head, mm, blood seeping out of they out of they out of they uh, uh 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 vital parts? Who could sit there and uh, and and in their conscience, in their spirit, mm. rest easy and saying that's that's okay, and move about and still be normal thereafter. And now keeping this in mind that some people who have been a part of this, because y'all still out there, it's some people who don't watch some lynchings. Mm. That's maybe you know, and they and they and they late. They they are quote unquote elders. They seventies. 80s, you know what I'm saying, right now, they don't see some lynchings. And they still try to posture as though they are more sane than we are. Damn. Straight mm. facts. Straight facts. Where, where, where's the psychological evaluations? Who, who, who's writing a book on the descendants of slave owners? They talk about us and how, how we're affected to this day. They do studies over that on why we behave the way that we behave. Where is the behavioral studies on white folks, on the slave, let me say it like this, on the slave owner's descendants? Where's the, where, where's the, cause you told me they, they, they still see it. Like you said, you have older women today or men today. That's why my, uh, my people used to tell me, listen, don't, don't hold the door open for that white lady. <laughs> don't do it. For that older white woman, don't hold that door. Cause you don't know what the hell she was doing back in the day. Mm -hmm. 70, she's 70, 80 years old. Yeah, she was probably out there watching the lynchings. She was probably over there cheering in the stands, rooting them on. Mm -hmm. And it's not for us to be bitter. I, I don't want anybody to think that I'm, I'm, I'm approaching this from a standpoint, oh, we mad, we bitter. One thing about us, we see the cause and effect, and we try to actually do something about it. When you understand the scriptures coming back to our heritage is how we do something about it. So let me, oh, I'm sorry, let me finish that verse where we was at. Um, go to reverse 68. So we read where these curses were going to be for a sign upon the children of Israel, right? Read that. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with shit. Stop. For anybody that reads the Bible, anybody knows the scriptures, when did the nation of Israel return back into Egypt as a nation? Never happened. Never happened. So what is this Egypt talking about? Think about it. You're talking to a people that just came out of slavery. So when they left from Egypt, God said, listen, you're going to go into Egypt again. But this time you're going to go by way of ships. When they thought of Egypt, they thought of hard bondage. They thought of chains. They thought of whips. Egypt is synonymous for slavery. Read that real quick. Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Come on. I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. The Egypt is synonymous for house of bondage. Now watch this. Give me Revelations 11. America is referred to as Egypt. This place that we're in right now is the new Egypt. You don't believe me? Look at your dollar bill. Look at the back of your dollar. Let's read that. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. Come on. And their body, in their dead bodies, shall lie in the street of the great city, mm -hmm. which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. The great city, spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. What was taking place in Sodom? All sorts of, of homosexual activity. I know, I'm sorry, I don't want to get you shut down, but there's a lot of faggotry going on in America today. They at the helm of it. And us as heterosexual men, why are we afraid to speak on it? Why is it? I make I be making posts on Facebook and I be seeing folks are scared. They don't want to come on say nothing. I hear that I'm posting like, where do all the heterosexual men at that's going to stand up and speak on what the hell's going on? Our children are being affected by this. When we was youngsters, this mess wasn't cool. This wasn't all right. But for some reason now, because society has deemed it as being okay and acceptable, now we got to be quiet and let it ride. Are, are you referring to uh, Medea being 
uh, the number oh. one black. <laughs> hey, don't speak on but I'm not like, listen. You try. I'm telling no, you, you hey, listen. Can't shut down. Well, I'm already getting in trouble by my mom by saying this in the first place. So I'm already out on a limb with a switch in my butt. You uh -oh. know what? I Bruh, how the hell is that entertainment? I'm just being honest. How no, is this but, entertainment to us? But every time I talk about Tyler Perry, I get crucified. Mm -hmm. Well, he's, well, he's a part of the agenda, if you ask me. Well, and that's the thing. So when you talk about homosexuality in, in general, when you're talking about uh, a group of people who are now wanting the children to have made a gender decision you know, before they know how to speak at the end of the day. They, they, mm -hmm. you know, because of gender fluidity, gender fluidity and all of these fancy labels that have come about over time um, in recent years. They, they, it, I mean, I'm gonna separate myself. I'm gonna put myself in the eighties. I'm gonna put myself in the nineties. That was the end of the era where um, uh, speaking out well, pre-pride, let me put it that way, before pre-pride like stepped that. out of the closet mm -hmm. and, and, and became a massive agenda amongst people where now, um, what, what we want to say, we want to call it canceling culture, canceling. You can't cancel anybody. I mean, you may try to pigeonhole me or alienate me and not listen to what I'm saying about certain things, but at the end of the day, why shouldn't a person personal opinion in regards to their choice you want to have your choice lifted above theirs by saying you have pride and respect me through the lgbt community but mm. you the lgbt community doesn't want to listen to anyone uh speak against them by saying hey some of your choices some of your actions are inappropriate mm. so it very good point but let me ask you this though just like they have the right, they have the right to be how they want and to say what they want, do the things that they do in public. Why is it that heterosexuals don't? Why am I wrong if I say, if I don't want my child being influenced by all the homosexual activity they putting up on TV? Why am I wrong for voicing that I, I find it to be a problem? If everything is in the open and everything's okay, why should I be canceled for speaking on what culturally I believe to be true because they culturally believe that they can do what they do. I can tell point Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, because Alexander the Great let everybody keep their religion. He was a fag too. Oh. <laughs> hey, but furthermore, not only can we not voice our beliefs, but it is, it is an attack on them. And I don't see how we got to that place. Because it mm. wasn't that way in the 70s, 80s, 90s. It wasn't that way. Now, if you speak out against them, it's, it's, it's an attack and you're, you're anti-gay. You know, you're starting, uh, well, they got laws to protect, to protect them from, you know, uh, quote unquote attacks, whether it's verbal, physical, whatever, mm. you know, that certain other groups don't even have. Did you know that in the 60s and the 70s, and I'm always going to, I'm sorry, I speak from a, from a psychological standpoint because that, that's what I do for it. I'm a behavioral health rehab specialist, so I deal in the, the psychological area. Do you know from the 60s, in, in, uh, the 60s and 70s, there was an actual mental health diagnosis for homosexuality? I crack your head. <clears throat> I'll take you in. Doctor. We got to come and explore you. We got to take you to the insane asylum if you are a sissy, if you are a <laughs> homosexual. Right. That was the recommendation Ooh. back in the days, right or wrong, right? Facts. Clinically, clinically, right? Clinically, okay. that's what, that's what, that, there was a diagnosis for it. Now, what okay. changed? The answer was kind of low back then. So, uh, I needed to, so we got to, we got to pay the bills, homie. I hear you. Move on. <laughs> Hey, I'm just saying my this is the thing. At, at the end of the day, what I'm the reason what, what I'm trying to drive home is America is the new Sodom. God destroyed five cities, which you know today is yep. Sodom and Gomorrah was comprised yep. of about five cities, and God destroyed five cities because of sexual immorality. People confused about their sexual preference. 
God destroyed that place. Destroyed. Two so holes. here it is now when it says this place that's spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. Why is it called Sodom? Because there's things that's happening here as well as Egypt. This is where the Israelites was taken as slaves again. Go back. But, to but, but, but hold on. Didn't little Dirk just move from Chicago to Atlanta? You say little who? <laughs> little Dirk just moved from Chicago to Atlanta not too long ago. Uh oh. Why? So he he mean, but that's, what do you? I mean, so what do you? So hold on. So you said little Dirk made a bad decision for moving from Chicago to Atlanta? Maybe that's Atlanta. where he's more comfortable. Atlanta is Gamora, I guess. <laughs> These cats is undercover, bro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Atlanta is new Gamora. Mm -hmm. This Fair shit enough. is getting deep, bro. This shit is getting deep. It's crazy. Read that real quick. The last Deuteronomy 28, 68. And this is the thing. I don't, because for some reason, when we read the scriptures, our people feel like they're being beaten over the head with the Bible. Mm -hmm. You should never feel like the, the Bible is hurting you unless you a dang demon. When you read, we're reading for our, our heritage purposes to understand where we come from culturally. So when you understand that these words are true and that all these things happen, what we're reading right here was prophecy fulfilled. All this stuff happened to us because of our disobedience. I disagree with you right there. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Give me, let me, no, let me have it. Why I, you disagree? Because I was reading the Old Testament last week mm -hmm. out loud and I almost got a felony. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, you about to say I went to court? How about you? Did you go to court? No, no, I went to court. <laughs> I mean, God was really mad. Like God was on no cap in that old uh, test, bro. He and he still ain't. When you read the scriptures, it says God don't change. Mm -hmm. He don't change. Oh. He says, I'm the Lord, I change not. In Malachi 3 and was it six, seven? Six. six. Oh. Read that. Let's finish that real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships mm -hmm. by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Because after we after we came out of Egypt, we were supposed to be good. We were supposed to be straight. But guess what? We went right back into the stuff that we were doing. We went right back into not keeping the commandments. Read. And there ye shall be sold. So he said, once you reach the destination on those ships, you were going to be what? Sold. Sold. Unto your enemies. No, your friends. Your enemies. Your equals. Your enemies. White folks. <laughs> what did it say? Your enemies. Uh-huh. For bond men and bond women. It says you would be sold as slaves to your enemies as bond men. I'm sorry, you'd be sold unto white folks as slaves, as what? Bond men and bond women. Now, how is the Bible, how did the Bible know that this was going to happen? And how are we not connecting the dots? Hmm. You read also in Deuteronomy 28, which we ain't got to go through all of it unless y'all want to. I got time. No, well, my, my biggest thing is you guys probably don't watch Madlock, do you? <laughs> yeah, we watch, I've seen Madlock back in the day. Well, he probably couldn't come to the church, could he? Mm -hmm. No, he, he he would he couldn't connect the dots. Matlock couldn't even connect the dots when it comes to this. The reason why the only people that's going to understand this Bible are those that keep God's commandments and the children of Israel. If you're not an Israelite, you're not going to understand this Bible. This is why we got denominations: Pentecostal, uh, Methodist, Catholic, Baptist, Baptist. Mm -hmm. All these things is because of confusion. Ain't what, what was Moses? If you was to ask Moses what was his religion, he looked at you crazy like you had five heads. They say yeah. Moses was a moor. Moses wasn't no damn moor. Where you reading this? That's what I'm talking about. Now watch this. The word moor was black. So, okay. Yeah. But Moses wasn't no moor. You can't name your relationship with God. How are you going to name somebody's relationship with the most high God? Either Moses. you do what he say or you don't. That's Moses always been the biblical the standpoint. Moses worshipped the moon. Says who? Says the Vikings, that's why they call them Luna with the horns, right? Listen, you still listen to white folks in 2022, bro. You got you got some work to do, bro. Well, you so you can't, you can't so a white person can't join the church. What you mean a white person can't join the church? And Edomite is not gonna be a part of the give me that Psalms 147 night. Oh man, Psalms 147. <laughs> oh snap. Uh oh, uh oh. Hey, y'all realize. Y'all realize, uh, let's be uh, let's be real. I, I think everybody's up here, maybe in their, was the upper 30s, right? All right, 40s. maybe 40s. Mid-40s. So Mid -40s. check this out. 
do y'all y'all realize at a certain point of time when we were separated, we were stronger? You remember when that word brother meant something? Mm. Hey, my brother, what's happening, brother? Mm -hmm. When we understood this struggle, it wasn't until we decided, oh, we're going to integrate ourselves mm -hmm. and, oh, we equals. And that we're the only ones living under that, not that you know, illusion of inclusion, that we equal. Everybody else understands what's going on. But for some reason now, whenever we diluted mm -hmm. the lines, we as a people grew apart. Now, all of a sudden, it's, it's, it's everybody for himself. But the other nations don't move like that. The Chinese don't move like that. They come over here, they set up their communities, they build up their community, communities. They spend money within themselves. They ain't giving their money out. They ain't going out here, oh, I'm gonna spend this over here. I'm gonna spend it with this guy. They build themselves up. Why is it that we as black people, we don't understand that we're stronger together and the outside influence is what's destroying us as a people? Well, we use gang signs and they so happen to use science, right? Uh oh, uh oh. Hey, well, well, my 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 grandma told me don't eat from everybody. So mm -hmm. that 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 that's where the division starts right there. I can't eat right. from your pot because your rice don't taste like my grandmama's. Straight up. But for some reason, now, now you say that, but that ain't what this generation, that's not what's happening now. That's not what we see out here. How is it? Listen, you go in our hoods, who run the corner stores? Arab man got the Ishmael got the corner stores. You want to go get something for your hey, head? Moor. I told you that's a Turk. He's a Moor. He's a Moor? Who? He black. Oh, hell no. Hell to the <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> Listen, he from, hey, he from Kush. No, brother. Uh-uh. The Kushites you go know today is Ethiopians. That's Kush. Oh. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The so Arab man. Huh? Oh, so oh, so now I'm just saying. I thought we was we going from my Bible to my GPS. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to be able to identify them. See, and that's another thing. When you understand the scriptures, you understand the lineage. When you read all them, such and such begat such and such, such and such begat such and such, and we are, we as we get bored. Begat, 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 begat. Oh, let me skip that. It's trying to show you your heritage, your linkage is important, and that's what we've lost is our linkage back to an, a, a man by the name of Israel. That's where we come from. That's where we stem from. What I tell you to get? Uh, Psalms 147. Read that. Psalms 147 and 19. To the book of Psalms. Chapter 147 and verse 19. You're not going to hear this in church, by the way. There's certain things that they will not read in church. Like you said, you read the Bible out in public about caught a felony. Why? Because nobody wants to really hear God. They want to hear what they want to hear that social religion. What said the kind of cause, appropriate? What kind of cause they ain't going to talk about this. Them Southern Baptists ain't going to talk about this. No, sir. What, what about, about these Protestants? No, what about sir. These <laughs> <laughs> read that. <laughs> he showeth his word unto Jacob. Uh huh. This by he showed his this word meaning his this Bible unto who? Jacob. Read his statutes and his judgments. Statutes or ordinances or laws or AKA commandments. He gave his laws and the judgments meaning the penalties for breaking those laws. Read unto Israel. Unto Israel, the Israelites. Read. He had not dealt so with any nation. Say it again. He had not dealt so with any nation. He didn't do this with okay. any other nationality. I ask Christians all the time, if God did not give the commandments to all people on the face of the earth, how could Jesus Christ come and die for their sins? Mm. If sin don't apply to them, how could he have died for your sins? When you read, matter of fact, watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 14. Show me how somebody of another nation can apply this commandment. Let's see if this fits. Deuteronomy 14, what is it? 21, 22? Let's see if this is all inclusive. See, that's another thing people don't realize. This Bible is stolen property. This Bible belongs to you and your ancestors. And what's crazy is nobody gives a damn when you call yourself Asiatic, when you call yourself more. Nobody gives a damn when you call yourself Islamic or Muslim. But for some reason, everybody's antennas go up when you say you're the Jew. Why? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22, I'm sorry, chapter 14 and verse 21. Read. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. God said, you as an Israelite, you can't eat of anything that dies of itself. So if you go out there and you see your, your cow and just killed over, you can't cut him up and, and distribute him out. Read. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates. God says, you 
can't eat it, but you can give it to the strangers, meaning the other nations that are dwelling in your gates, Read That he may eat it. That he can eat it, Read. <laughs> Or thou mayest sell it unto an alien. Read me an uh, alien talking about somebody that dwells outside of Israel of the other nations. But you being an Israelite, you can't eat it. Read. For thou art in holy people. God says you are holy people, but you can give it to the other nations to eat. Now, wait a minute. That somebody might say, not nah, my Jesus. Everybody <laughs> the same. It ain't never been like that. Right. <laughs> when the children of Israel took over the land of Canaan, God told them, go and kill everybody. Leave nobody alive. The Hittite, the Hivite, the Gergeshite. He said, kill everyone. Well, hold so up. Nobody wants to believe in that guy. Nobody wants to believe in, in, the, in the true disciple. I'm sorry. Are the you true speaking Lord. metaphorically? Say that again. Are you speaking metaphorically? No, sir. This was actual. This was literal. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna read this in church, bro, because they trying to hide God from you. God so, God, said, so huh? this wait, is wait, 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 wait. I, 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 I'm with you on this. Now. It so, should have been nobody left but holy people if they followed the law. Facts. Dang. True. Facts. True. Dang. True. Now, 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 now. Let's let's spin the let's spin the table now. Go ahead. Listen, I come for the smoke, bro. I don't know That's if y'all right. understand. Let's spin the like, table. Let's spin the table, smoke. man. Hey. Right. So is Jesus black? And 100%. also, where did Jesus come from versus, yeah, when do we go from Jesus, Yahshua to Jesus? Okay, so let's deal with your first question. Give me Revelations 1. Revelations the first chapter. So, okay, so watch this. Back to what we, what we proved earlier, that those people you read about, that went into slavery by way of slave ships and was sold unto white folks as slave men and slave women, they're the children of Israel. Those are black people. You read throughout the Bible about everyone who you read of, of the lineage being black. And we're gonna show you. Revelations chapter one. I'm gonna go with the cliche verse first. I'm gonna go with the cliche one that everybody expects you to go to. I'm gonna deal with that one first. Hair like wrong. Hair like, wrong. like wrong. Exactly. Well, I'm gonna deal with that one first, but people don't even know. There's much more. Mm -hmm. There's much more. Read that. Revelation chapter one and verse 14. Read verse one real quick. Verse one, mm -hmm. the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Revelation is from the, the root word is revealed. This is the revealing of Jesus Christ. We are about to see Christ. Read verse 14. Verse 14. Matter of fact, no. Start at verse... 12. Is it 10 or 12? I was in the spirit? Yeah. Verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So this is John the Revelator. On the Sabbath day, he said he was in the spirit, right? Uh, jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. Uh -huh. He said he heard a great voice as of a trumpet. He didn't sound like no squeaky white man, by the way. Scripture says Christ's voice was like the voice of waters. Our voices are naturally deep. This just us as black folks. We have a demanding voice. It just comes natural, read. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Now watch this. This is when, when niggas get goofy. They say, nobody's seen Jesus. <laughs> nobody's seen the Lord. John said that he turned to see the voice that spoke to him, read. And being turned, uh -huh. I saw seven golden candlesticks. He saw seven golden candlesticks. So now he's, just, he's writing down what he sees with his eyes, and he's describing it. He saw seven golden candlesticks. That's a menorah. He saw a menorah, read. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, mm -hmm. one like unto the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. So he saw behind the seven candlesticks, the menorah, he saw the son of man, which was who? Christ, read. And it says he was closed down with a garment that went all the way down to his foot, read. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. He had on a golden girdle, okay, read. His head and his hair, his, the hairs on his head and the hairs on his face, were white like wool. Were white and woolly textured. Read. As white as snow. As white as snow. Come on. And his eyes. Like my man right here. Look at look, 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 <laughs> perfect. Let me make his screen big right here, bro. I don't know how I make this thing. You go listen, bro. You looking like Christ right now. I need, I need to put this. How do I make it big? I can't make it big. Uh, he got to be talking. Oh, okay. he gotta, he gotta, Point is. Yeah. Like my man right here, he hit the hairs on his head and the hairs on his face were white and woolly textured and they were white like wool, read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire. You read, you read the scripture about the prophecy. Christ was a wine drinker. A lot of people don't know that. His eyes were red with wine, read. 
and his feet uh -huh. like unto fine brass. Now he looked down at his feet and it said it looked like what? Fine brass. What color is brass? Brass off top brown. is brown. Right. Off top oh, that, brass is brown. That nigga sound like me. That, that, <laughs> well, hold on, watch this. Now this is where it gets a little, little tricky. What, read on. As if they burned in a furnace. Take that brass now and burn it in and, a furnace. And, so he it's dark not, brown. Exactly. He wasn't just brown. This man was black. He was blue yeah. black. Burp. Price was an extremely dark man. He, he Wesley Snipes. Wesley <laughs> Snipes with white <laughs> woolly hair. Like I said, my man right here is a, is, is a good figure to, to say what he looked like. Dark man, right? Talking shit. Talking shit. There, he's a yeah. good figure because so, that's what Price looked like. Now watch so. this. I wanted to go to the cliche verse first because for some reason we think this is the only place it was recorded. Give me oh. Daniel. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 5. This is the book of Daniel, the 10th chapter and the 5th verse. Daniel seen the same vision that John the Revelator sent. When you understand the Bible, everything builds with itself. The scripture says precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. The Bible mates with itself. So Daniel seen the same vision that John seen. Read that. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 5. Come on. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen, mm -hmm. whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphrates. Same thing. He looked up, he saw this man, and he had a long garment on, and he had a golden girdle on. Read. And his body also was like the barrel. Now he described the color of his garment that he had on. Barrel is a type of green. He had on a green garment. Read. And his face as the appearance of light. His face was his appearance of lightning. When you understand in Ecclesiastes, the eighth chapter in the first verse, it says, wisdom maketh your face to shine. Come on. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Eyes like lamps of fire. Same thing that uh, John seen. Read. And his arms and his feet. It says his arms and his feet. Read. Like in color. Like in what? Color. Color. To polish brass. This man was a black man. But for oh, some reason in church, we go in church. All we see is the cliche Charleston Heston damn yep. hippie images on the walls. Black, black folks will say stupid stuff like, well, the color of Christ don't matter. You listen, our people are so dumb. What happens when I look at this man my, right now? What's, uh, I look at Mr. Hayden. I look at Mr. Robinson. And I see this man. I see Christ in this man. I don't see a nigga. I don't see just somebody. I see this man. I see this man as an Israelite. He a Judite. We're supposed to see Christ in one another so we don't refer to ourselves as niggas and bitches and hoes and gang, gang yeah, but, terminology. But oh, that's how, the right there, huh? How, how are we going to get, how are we going to take offering if Jesus is black everywhere as far as getting the most money, realistically? Say you know, like if we're, if we're taking offering at church, I'm not really, I don't know if I necessarily want, you know, Lou Rawls up there, right? You know what I'm saying? I want more of a Ryan Seacrest. This guy, right? Oh. Hey, so you say white Jesus is, is more for, is better for advertising I'm not, purposes? I'm not trying to go there, but it, it's a tough year, right? Because you know, you know, when you you go to the black store, man, you you ask them for somebody to give you a little something. When you go to the white store, you just peel out them dollars. You know, you don't, you don't that's, that's no discount. Kind of like that. You mean when they were smoking the pack of cools with those two black yeah. people with good teeth and their yeah. teeth was tight and they had a they had those cools right? You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey. I mean, come on, hey. Marlboro Light has the Marlboro man. He he's still alive, right? You know what mm. I mean? You know what I'm saying, bro? Not GP mm. soft pack. Come on, bro. Damn. <laughs> hey, that's through that image, through that white image, is how they destroyed us, bro. Yeah. And this is why we have an, an inferiority complex within ourselves. It's because when we look at when we look at white folks, oh, we see God. How is it that you got the heart? And Hayden, we grew up, we was in the hood with these niggas. Here it is, you got the hardest nigga from the 60s. He this, I shoot a killer, da, 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 da. He's shooting three, 30 bloods. It's busting at him. He got one gun, he's shooting at all these bloods, right? One cop car pull up and everybody scattered. One white guy hops out with a little bitty pistol. <laughs> and everybody runs. Beforehand, they had choppers and everything. They was out here busting. But for some reason, the all-powerful white man show up. And all of a sudden, the Negro with the inferiority complex, he thinks that he can't defeat him. You see what I'm saying? This thing has destroyed us mentally. It's destroyed our minds to where to the point now where we but, can't even look at each other for too long. 
Nigga, what you looking at? What you looking at? We see ourselves as being inferior. But, but, listen, but listen what you just said. If you see it the right way, you see the God in them. If you see the God in them, how in the hell could you kill them? Damn. And if Fact. if you see, you know, if you see that white man, that's something that you can never be. Mm -hmm. But it's also something that you're going to fear and respect. You know, so if you see, you know, that's why a lot of people got, got brainwashed, man, because mm -hmm. If God is black, like you said, you you things that's going on in Chicago or any any place in the hood, how could you kill another black man if you see the God? Of? Straight up. But see, we the most that's, feared. That's, and that's something that will unify us. Mm -hmm. We 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 the most feared people, anyways. When they yeah. see when they see this man, I just got out the way so you can see the man clearly. When they see a person moving about coming in looking like this. Most people, like you said, brother, we they in awe. They looking at the skin tone, they looking at the distinctive features, and they having to question and think like, man, is this him? Is he here with us on earth? Facts. You know what I'm saying? What, what's, what's, who, who is, what's his name? I see Black Creek Warrior. That's it. You know they ain't gonna, you know they ain't gonna identify. Yeah, they ain't gonna give you too much, man. Hey, hey, Mr. Mr. Hayden, we, what you need to do, you need to get um, Mr. You remember Graham, Anthony Graham, right? Yep. You need to get his father on the show. When I say this man has an extensive understanding on the black Indians of Oklahoma, more, more, more distinctly, we, we know the tribe, we call they're the tribe of Reuben. We know where they come from. The, the Seminoles or what they call Creeks, the Reubenites. He has an extensive study on Gad here in Oklahoma, bro. When I say I'm, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get him um, to do a show as well. I'm trying to sit down with that man as well. He has a very. Oh, hold on. Be before you say anything else, uh, hey, uh, but, hey, but, 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 but wait, real quick though. <laughs> hey, hey, so that picture behind you, Hayden, and as I as I've been talking for to you personally, listen, man. We talk about native Indians and all this. Who these fake imposters are? Because at the end of the day, none of them were wearing no headdress that looked like Chief Wahoo McDaniel. That's all new age stuff that they putting on these Eskimos and Yucatees and all the ones that was in southern Canada that they pushed down out of Canada when the French and the British came in and colonize up in that territory. Mm. Who are these imposters, man? Because mm. we mm. don't rock like that. That's not our natural head wraps, man. We wear we wear we wear turbans or fez wrap turbans historically, but, albeit from the east or to the west. So but think about think about too. Who were your interpreters when you go back and see the pictures? Think about Sacagawea. In the in the in the spread into the west mm -hmm. uh think about even the movie posse mario van peebles tried to get you to see who some of those people were the first the original cowboys when they're spreading from the west and who had those deeds from oklahoma going more west of california who was the first people who explored those areas and who who spoke and communicated who knew six several languages and also who who pirated those ships through the Mississippi, around those lakes, before before we had a Panama Canal or anything else, you know, who was the real black Blackbeard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we got a lot of things changed to, to, to take away that respect, you know, to take away our heritage, to take away things that would would have gave us honor, you know. Right. Facts. I'm sorry. I don't want to. I'm okay. Let me finish this real quick. I because I don't went. I don't went all the way left. My point is, <laughs> I can show we can show Christ being black. Now let's go back as far as lineage wise. I don't know if y'all know anything about Christ's heritage. His father was Joseph. He comes from the tribe of Judah, right? When you read, give me that Matthew's one. Matthew chapter one, read verse one. Matthew chapter one and verse one. Uh huh. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the son of David, the son of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Read on. So here it is. This is 
like I said, a lot of people get caught up and they skip this stuff because they figure it's boring. The son right. of so-and-so, the son of so-and-so. My favorite read on, I'll give you some more examples. Yeah, Solomon. Abraham begat Isaac, mm -hmm. and Isaac begat Jacob, mm -hmm. and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. So Christ was from the tribe of Judah. This we know as a historical fact. Why? Because it tells you his lineage. Now jump to verse six. Verse six. Uh huh. And Jesse begat David the king. Mm -hmm. And David the king begat Solomon, and I'm sorry, and begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Uriah. So we're seeing King David is in the lineage of, of Yahweh Shah or Yeshua or whoever you want to call him, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, here it is. We see King David is in his lineage, as well as who? Verse seven. No. Oh, Solomon, King Solomon. Uh, Solomon, I've heard that begat of the wife of Uriah. Let's get Solomon. Give me uh, Songs of Solomon, chapter one. Again, you're not. They're not reading this stuff in church. And so I should keep my Bible, huh? So I should keep my YMCA membership. Yeah, keep your YMCA. Cancel that <laughs> church membership. That ten percent. Keep the Y, bro. Oh, <laughs> but why Solomon? Solomon's important because he's one of the richest and wisest men. Absolutely. Absolutely. And let's see what Solomon looked like. Read verse one. The song of Solomon, chapter one and verse one. Read. The song of songs, which is Solomon. So this is Solomon's book. These are his words. Read verse five. Verse five. Come on. I am black. Read it again. I am black. One more time for the people. I back. am black. Solomon tells you what he looks like. He says, I am what? Black. Come on. But comely. Read. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. He's talking now. I don't know if y'all know the history of Solomon. Solomon had, what was it, over 500 wives? Yeah. My man had, listen, he was about the ladies. Solomon had, he was, he said, listen, I'm black and beautiful. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. Read. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. As the tents of Kedar. As the tents of Kedar. What is Kedar? Black. Read. As the curtains of Solomon. His curtains was black. He says, I'm black like my curtains. Read. Look not upon me because I am black. Uh huh. Because the sun hath looked upon me. Wait a minute. He said he was so dark because the sun had looked upon him. Now, last time I checked, it was you that got darker in the sun. White folks get redder. What's we out here in Oklahoma? We call them Pecklewoods. <laughs> Rednecks. <laughs> Hey, that this this is Bible. He yeah. says he'd been in the sun so much that he was that's why he was so so dark. Solomon, who's in the lineage of Jesus Christ, would tell you what he looked like. Matter of fact, give me the whole tribe of Judah, please. The whole tribe of Judah. It tells you what color they are. Matter of fact, you give me uh Job. Oh, so KRS one lied to us too, then. When he said, um, I'm not black, I'm brown from the boogie down. But you saying Solomon said, I'm black. I'm black. Yeah. I'm black. Absolutely. I'm black. I'm bliggity blick, black, black, bliggity black, 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 black. What, what, what verse is that again? That? Give me that verse. Give me that verse one more time. What verse? CB4. He was CB4 black. black. Bliggity black, black of the black, black. Right. Hey, so, what um, verse? So, so if Solomon is black, does that mean I automatically born with a seal on my back? You said with a seal? Yeah. No, yeah. not necessarily. Because this is the thing, too. What, what we don't realize, like, you have Chinese people and you have Japanese people. Everybody that's black ain't Israel. At one point in time, everybody on the face of the earth was black. Scriptures tell you Solomon was black. When you understand that different lineages came from different heritage, now you understand that there's a difference between a African and an Israelite. So you still have Israelites in Africa now. Those people you see dwelling, what they call the Gold Coast on the, on the West Coast of Africa, down in the South, they're scattered throughout all of Africa now, just like over the world. But from a, like Ancestry tries, tries to do, there's a difference between those Black folks in West Africa than them Black folks up in North Africa. See what I'm saying? There is a difference in heritage. No, so, I, no, my grandma, my grandma said I couldn't drink coffee because it'll make me black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, then she only she treated my light skin cousins better than me anyway because I didn't get there on the target. I had to stay in the car. Damn, damn, damn! Your grandma got Willie Lynch, bro. We've all been <laughs> Willie. <laughs> but I go to Walmart though. 
Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> What's wrong with Hayden, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Read that real quick. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Watch this. Judah morning. Uh-huh. So we're talking about the whole tribe of Judah, Read. And the gates thereof language. Come on. They are black. They are what? They are black uh -huh. unto the ground. They're black like the ground. So this goes back to your KRS-1 uh, statement. When we say in black, we don't necessarily just mean, we don't mean black like this. Black like the ground, like the dust of the ground, the dirt. So that's so all different complexions of brown. So I'm like a different monk. shade. Hayden's like a that monk shade. and Bill Monk huh? City. Like that monk and Bill Glade. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm, but see, I'm saying this, I'm saying this, brother, as you know, like metaphorically, when you have artistry, poets, you know, they like to they like to play with the words to kind of use it as a negative connotation mm -hmm. uh, in an artistic manner. And that's why I'm saying when he put the I'm not black beforehand to say then to go on to say I'm brown. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's an intellectual thought that I'm that I'm tapping into from a person who tries to be very philosophical through his wordplay. Right. And put yourself in this perspective on why he's describing it the way that he is, because think about it. All of us, give me that in Acts. Like us, we have, everybody got a partner. Somebody's connected to a brother who we called Black. Everybody, right? Give me that, Acts 13. Oh, that. Same thing. We know somebody. He, that's his name, Black. And even as us, man, you Black, Black. You too. Like, we always have made that, like you just said, we've always had that connotation to where we describe things as such. Why? Because that's us. That's a fulfillment of our Blackness. That's who we are. So we that's what's in our surroundings. We discuss and, 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 and deal with things based on what we see. Read that. Acts 13 and 1. Acts chapter 13 and verse 1. Watch this. Now there was in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon mm -hmm. that was called nigger. Simeon was called what? Nigger. N-I-G-E-R. What does that word mean? It's A. That's what we was last week. And that's why I said nigger is not a bad word. It's not a negative connotation. And it's okay. So you know what I'm saying? I say to them white people out there, I free y'all now, man. Y'all fuck <laughs> up my nigga. <laughs> 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 oh, snap. Man, this ain't, we talking about white people, they put nigga in the Bible and all. <laughs> 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 hey, white folks didn't put it in there, bro. That was us. And his name was, that, that was his name because that word means black. That's all it means. Black. Now, I will tell you this, though. It's a different connotation when a white person says it. I ain't free of nobody. <laughs> like I said, they it, it comes from a different place for them. There, have you ever noticed there is not a derogatory term for white folks? Try to name one. You just Cracker. said it. Cracker. Cracker one? White people one. made Cracker. they created that. Florida crackers. Crackers. They came up with that. True. Honky. They create nothing from us. We didn't create any term to describe or to, in, in a derogatory sense, towards white folks. Are you trying to talk me into being a racist? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Absolutely not. Uh, Listen, a man of God is going to be at peace with all men. That's another thing people get twisted about. Uh, me. They think I'm racist. I'm not racist. I just know history. I know facts. I know what, what happened to us. I speak on the demise of my people, what's happened to us as a people. And for some reason, when I talk about that, now all of a sudden, oh, well, he don't like white folks. I don't have a problem well, with white folks. Well, so, every so, time you talk, I got to look left and right in a room by myself. So Say you're on the, on the honorable, honorable Muhammad, uh, 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 who, who, who is, yeah, oh, yeah. Farrakhan list now? That's what mm -hmm. you said. Mm. <laughs> I love, hey. uh, Farrakhan still got good hair, though. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with him? Farrakhan got good hair. Farrakhan's mixed. <laughs> no, let's tell the truth. My, my man is mixed. But anyways, point the point that I'm making is we have yet to really tap into our true heritage. And the reason being is because we don't research and we don't study. We read in the book of Isaiah 34 and 16, it says, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. We have to come to the scriptures to gain our heritage. And the reason being, because everybody, everything else is lying to us. 
all these history books, they're given, it's it's a one-sided story of what happened. That's why my man is speaking about who, who are the real who are the real Indians? Because you got $5 Indians over here right now that's claiming and running the casinos and got everything popping over here like they the true people. But in, in all actuality, when you actually know who the real ones are, they're not the ones in the commercials. They're not the ones that's getting that's getting broadcasted or even getting any benefits. They didn't move them out. A lot of us, like I said, you do your, 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 the whole ancestry thing. A lot of us thought we were Native American. We were this. They ain't even testing the real ones, bro. Right. So how could you, how could you say that, oh, that's, we have a link with, 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 uh, whatchamacallit them with the Native Americans when they not testing them. They ain't taking them tests, bro. So they don't even have a population to speak to, you know, regardless and, of the fact. And, and, and then the, the question that lies is, and I say this about a lot of things. With all these scientists out here, all of these uh, doctors out here, so nobody don't know how to do the real DNA pool to separate where we can go to something that's really concentrated to be color specific, mm. as opposed to us being relying upon 23andMe and Ancestry.com, where we don't know where that sample is going off into. Mm -hmm. But I'm not fearful of it at the end of the day because they already told you who got it. You know, as I've said, um, we know that the Church of the Latter Day Saints. That's what I was getting to earlier. They the a lot of behind, they're the ones that's actually behind this stuff. The whole uh, genealogy yeah. pool. Yeah, yeah they, they the ones at the helm of. Yeah, well, they, they spent a lot of money right, right? To, cause, to cause the interference play. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, hate my my fault. Oh, good. Well, uh, first of all. Uh, shout out to Marilyn Ann Hayden for teaching me genetics at 13 years old because she was bored at the Oklahoma Historical Society. So I guess the history bug bit me historically. Mm. But uh, but with the Mormons, we got I mean, first of all, the hotels are, are really nice. And the Gideon Bible is always clean and pristine. Honestly, I'm like, they just now let us in, to be a clergyman in the church like in the 70s. I don't see what the problem is. And the basketball teams that you better, you better look behind my head, then look right, behind right, my right. Head. Look Facts. Facts. Hey, why are him images like that hidden? Why we gotta look into the Russian icons to find out what the people actually look like back then? Why no, we gotta he, dive well, wait? Hold on. He actually the king of Germany, Italy, and Greece. Uh oh. What's his name? That's King uh, Henry right there, the second. Uh oh. But they said his face is green on that picture. So, but ain't no green humans on Earth. So, right. I'm saying, yeah. Like I said, I don't don't get me started on that because I I even got that. That's a whole nother debate. I don't like I don't like debating things I can't pull I can't prove. Biblically, because I'm gonna tell you right now, I I I think King James was black. I think. Oh no, don't. Go ahead, LeBron. No, he said LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, I, was like, yeah, I knew he was athletic. Mm -mm -mm. But the, it's a lot that they've hidden from us, especially during the the transition, what they call the dark ages. A lot of stuff got. got yeah, but but, but my, my thing is with the because the King James Version Bible has broken up a lot of churches and messed up a lot of barbecues. You damn okay. right. Yeah. Damn right. And what after when, when the black families kind of messed up with the King James Version, the potato salad wasn't right at the black barbecues. Because <laughs> stuff like this. You know what why, I mean? Why? Because you can't put pork in it? Well, because you, but my thing is, <laughs> well, would you let King James watch your kids? No, sir. <laughs> no sir and that again that's based off of hearsay like i said we don't know for sure what, what he had going on but like oh. you said that king james version bible what we call the king james version bible has broken up a whole lot of barbecues and it's because when you actually read it as it's written and without the outside influence all of a sudden now things get cloudy because of what people don't want to do people don't want to keep the commandments bro. that's what it all boils down to okay that's what it all boils down to Listen, Hebrew Israelites versus you. You said you don't consider your 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 clergyship as a Hebrew Israelite. You are Israelite, right? I'm an Israelite, right? 
Okay, so what's the what? Give me the distinctive difference versus the group of men that I see uh, with the purple on, with the gold trims, mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm trying to pull it in because you know I want to call y'all Power Rangers, but right. y'all know. <laughs> hey, but, folks gotta get creative, bro. Like but, I, I didn't heard but, the Power Rangers one. No, we are. So watch this. I'm one of the heads. I'm one of the heads of that group in purple. No, no. What I'm saying, dude, you, y'all, y'all respectfully explained it as your as your man over there been reading the verse, and I can I can intellectually understand your 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 dress code now mm-hmm. with, with the gold around there. You know, it's better, it's more clear to me now as opposed to just seeing people pop up. Mm-hmm. So, back to the question: those gentlemen. New York City, Baltimore, all over these places that's out on the corner, garb, dressed in those garbs. What's the mission? Who are they? Are you guys affiliated left, right to come under one house at some point? And as far as the direction of the Israelites, where are we going? Right. Okay. So let me, let me, let me back up. The reason why we don't subscribe to that name, Black Hebrew Israelites, that is a term that Europeans, white folks, have dubbed us to separate us from being the actual Israelites. It's actually derogatory when you think about it, because they're trying to say that we're not the actual Israelites, but we're we're Black Hebrew Israelites, meaning we're we're different than actual uh, Israelites. So that's why we don't subscribe to that term Black Hebrew Israelite. I am a Hebrew, and a Hebrew Hebrew is just a descendant of Hebrew. That's where that, that name, that word comes from, Hebrew. Um, so I would subscribe. I wouldn't call myself Hebrew Israelite, but I'm an Israelite. I'm a Hebrew, but before anything, I'm a believer. Um, those brothers that you see out there on the corners, and they, they may not necessarily be in, in purple and gold, but I do consider them my brothers as well. Now we don't all have or share the same. Um, doctrine or belief system so you have some israelites that do not believe in the messiah they only believe uh genesis to the book of malachi okay they don't subscribe to the messiah you have other israelites that are kind of with the new wave of what we call today so-called christianity Mm -hmm. where they believe on the messiah but they don't keep the commandments where you'll find israel united in christ the brothers in purple We believe from the beginning to the end. No, we're not throwing our own thoughts in there. We're not trying to um, do things on our own benefit. Like you have some churches, which I won't say in the Israelite community, but like in churches, the pastors living off the people. The scripture says, if a man don't work, he don't eat. I have a job. I got two jobs. Everybody here, they they, they take care of themselves. Um, Doctrinally wise, you will see that you may see some brothers in different colors, and that's just to show distinction between that congregation and the next. But at the end of the day, we all Israel. So it's all love. All right. So so why we got Solomon looking a little skittish right here when they when they always <laughs> 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 and, and who made that? Uh this is from the Masonic Lodge, the house of oh. in Washington DC. Right. At, hey. the, at, at the major lodge. Now we now watch this. The Masonic Lodge. It, what's the name? Prince There's, Hall. Is it? Yeah. Is that the one that black folks can't be a part Prince of? Hall. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. This, this the other side. This ain't PHA. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the answer right there. <laughs> that's why he looked like that. Okay. They don't want to portray the. They don't want to portray none of the biblical figures as being who they are. But he do oh. look like he look, do look like Nipsey Hussle a little bit though. He, but, <laughs> But I, love, like, Damn. but I love uh, uh, Glenn Levitt's single malt scotch. <laughs> Where that box at? Hold on. Give me this. What you talking about? This one right here, bro? Oh, man. Man. <laughs> Hey, 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 man. He said, hey, hold on, man. He said, hey, listen, Tone, I, he didn't convert me, homie. But it is, <laughs> hey, it is in a purple box, though, with a it gold It is in a purple sandwich. box, bro. You got to represent, bro. You got to represent, man. But no, the biggest, like I said, for us, the biggest thing, again, is bringing our heritage back to our people because we've tried everything in the community, but keep God's commandments. 
We tried everything. I'm talking about we didn't walk. How long are we going to march and hope white folks feel sorry for us and change their minds? How long are we going to sit up here and, and, and complain? We have to start with the culture. The culture is the problem, bro. And that's what we out here for. All right. So now we know Indian, Native Americans got their reservations and everything. Do y'all have conclaves or y'all got compounds where y'all trying to bring it together for the people in America, in the States, to pull it together? Right. We would we would definitely love to have something like that. I would say we we're not at that point. Like we've started a little community here, like where I'm at, but that's just us building within within exile, within this this captivity. So I got a this about what's about 14, 15 homes over yeah. next. Yeah. We got about 14, 15 homes, you know, that we're right. building over here with us. But like I said, on a mass scale, we have, we haven't reached that level yet. But we would love to get to that point to where we can, where we have our own. We don't we don't we don't want to eat their food. They, they, we, listen, they, they destroying us through our diet. They're destroying us through the things that they're giving us. So if we could get away from all that stuff, man, we, we'd love to do that. It's in the works. Oh, so are you trying to say, uh, um, iron kids bread has killed more niggas than bullets? <laughs> <laughs> listen, hey, bro, I'm for real, bro. You got, you got some serious things going on, bro. You got some serious things going on upstairs, bro. <laughs> Hayden is a trip, bro. Yes, iron, iron and kill. Uh, what's that? Iron kids, bread. They didn't kill both <laughs> kids and bullets, bro. We no, but we bought the wonder bread. It makes you feel good. No, nah, man. No. We thought that. <laughs> we thought that. Remember when the commercials came out, bro? You thought that bread was special? <laughs> bro. <laughs> None of us had it. You had to go to white folks' house to get the bread, bro. Mama kinda, wasn't buying that stuff, man. Kind of like stove top. <laughs> <laughs> No, you racist. I will say, I, I think you are racist. I will let you. I will dub you as a racist official because stovetop that was definitely in the White House. <laughs> That's what it is, man. You know, we offer a little different outtake, man. Talking shit podcast. We try to get a variety, and we definitely respect you and your in your position. Um, salute to your team over there, man. Because I'm telling you, but I thought you had that Kanye new box, boy. <laughs> I think that thought was on cue, man. I'm sitting up here like, damn, what up, what up, getting that thing so quick, man. Woo wee. No, no, hey man, go transcriber over there, man. I salute, brother. You was on par the entire show. I appreciate the blessing and the offering, man, for y'all coming in and giving the perspective and and and, and also uh edification of who you are and what you represent. Because this is a question we put up online yesterday. Again, we on our little series, you know, it's it, for us it's satire, but also some of it does bring some 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 edification to questions that people will have out there in regards to their religion, mm-hmm. in regards to their spiritual makeup as a man and their spirit man. And um I, I, y'all been great. You know what I'm saying? You've been great, you've been open, you've been down, down, down to earth, which is something that you don't get from people who are really in divinity because when they feel like you kind of straddling in that line disrespecting mm-hmm. the situation you know what i mean they kind of shy away or back up off of it so I, I do appreciate you know your full candidness no nah, no worries bro definitely like i said one thing about us you're gonna find about the brothers you see in purple we want all the smoke bro so mm-hmm. we we run into stuff like this and it's never we don't take nothing about disrespectful. I hope nobody takes disrespect from me because I, I I give it as well. And that's so that's well, how we like deal. Huh? I don't like the way you talk about white people. Hey, you gotta take that up with the Lord, bro. <laughs> the problem <laughs> when you when you understand everything has to be from a scriptural standpoint. If it ain't if it ain't Bible, listen, it, it's it's your opinions, it's your thoughts. So, like I said, we always gonna give a biblical perspective, and that's what we gonna stand on. So, so you just had your run in, in Washington D.C. a couple of weeks back, right? Right. Well, I think I seen you on uh on, on somebody had you caught y'all crew. Y'all was across the street from Howard University at the McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody got a clip of y'all on um, TikTok. Oh yeah. What, what what's the motive, man? What was the march? What was the agenda? So it's not just D.C. See, what's happened is. Y'all see how that's on TikTok, right? Here it is. We done took, we done marched a thousand men, over a thousand men through the streets of Chicago. We was in the hood, one of the, the most drug infested, murderous parts of town. 
Inglewood. We didn't we didn't march through there. We went through Memphis. Where else we done been? Through Atlanta. All these different hoods all throughout America. No news coverage. Who was there? They was there. Was there? None of them. None of them posted it because they don't want to show black unity. That's the only reason why we march. We ain't marching like like other folks be doing to make make white folks feel sorry. We're trying to show <laughs> our people. Look, black people can come together and be unified on one front that we all could come together and be structured and be ordered and make real changes in our community. And that's what our people needs to see. So when you see us in DC, they see that structure, they see that army come through there and they're like, wow, what is this about? And that's when we give them the literature, show them what's going on, tell them who they are. And like I said, man, it's, it's, it's working wonders, man. Our people are waking up all over the world. And ain't just here in America. We got churches throughout the, um, Europe, we got Africa. churches in Africa, Central South, Central America. South America, Belize, uh, Honduras, Japan. We get listen, we everywhere, bro. Folks is waking up because we've been scattered throughout the earth. This so is just saying, the a prophecy. You're saying y'all crucading without killing folks. Y'all yeah, give y'all paperwork. Y'all lit. Exactly. Where do you see or have you seen a steady increase in membership as you guys are going out to try to fellowship? from a missionary standpoint and, and an outreach standpoint with the community to bring the numbers up. You mean as far as a, a specific city or where in general? Because it's no, the hood. No, it's just overall. Are, are you, in the hoods, where our people's at, where your pastors are scared to go. Our pa your pastors scared to go out in these streets and talk to these gang bangers, these hood niggas. They scared to come out here and be on the front line where this stuff is, was taking place. That's why we put ourselves out there so that they can see. We are a part of the community. We're the same. We ain't no different. So you got people taking off they 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 bow ties and, and putting their bean pies down and jumping jumping ship. That's what you're nice. saying. All right, we got brothers cut that they, that's come from the nation of Islam. We got brothers putting the bandanas down, you know what I'm saying? All walks of life. Then y'all you got police officers. You got, How you can y'all can't keep up with the Muslims? Say it again. Y'all can't team up with the Muslims like Marvel and DC. <laughs> 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 no, bro, they don't mix, bro. It doesn't mix, bro. No, sir. Now, them are our brothers, man. Like I said, we you won't ever see. We ain't going to fight. Like, it ain't no, no gang banging. Like, we about to throw hands type stuff. But especially here in the city, you, uh, you got a lot of, of, of the nation Islam that don't really care for me too much. And it's because of stuff that happened back in the day. But this, like, we dialoguing. That's what we was doing. We just, you know what I'm saying? Back and forth, going through the scriptures. And like I said, some people don't like that, but there's a lot of them that do respect, you know what I'm saying? And we straight, like the, the, the leaders, the heads, I'm cool with them. We straight. What's the beef though? What's the beef with the people of Islam? Right. So it's, it's, it, it comes to a doctrinal difference. So they don't believe like we believe as far as who the Messiah is and what we must do for salvation. And for me, that's a threat to my people. Because at the end of the day, I'm trying to I'm trying to save my people. Anybody coming with something other than the true solution to me is a threat for my nation. So I'm not I'm going to treat them as such. Not Are all so oh, well, let's speak on our law, man. Can you speak on our law? Who is our law? Arm, leg, leg, arm, head. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's a man. <laughs> you Wu Tang it? You Wu Tang uh, it? Straight up, bro. Listen, that's it's it's a man made. It's another man made religion that stemmed off of this Bible. Because I thought Allah it. was one of the three wise men. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Will you what? understand this? No, absolutely wait, not. Wait, wait, okay, wait, wait. Three wise men, Bal, Bal, Sal, Bal Salzadar. Is, it, is, it, is he one of the three wise men? Bal, I'm yeah, trying to make sure I'm spelling it. Are you talking about in the time of Daniel? I'm talking about when, 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 when the, um, my what cousin, the, the Maggie, the Maggie, the, the, right. the Maggie. You're talking the, about them. Maggie. You said one of them name was Allah? No. No, no, no. I ain't talking about Allah. I'm oh. talking about I'm trying to be straightforward and say, I think his name was Bal Sothar so, so or something like that. Now, who were the three wise men? See, they, they're so important. I don't know anything about them. Right. So. But I gave you one, man. Hey, what, what's the, wait, wait, wait. What's the guy who was in the, in the, in the, in the fire? No, man. In the mint, it was in the uh, Star Wars, the menace face with the red face. His name was. Oh, Bell Darth Vader. 
No, man. They call him Bal Salzador. Man, I'm going to have to look that one up, and I'm going to bring it back. But they're saying that that was the darker man at the uh, christening of Christ or at the birth of Christ through the uh, the, the Maggi, the M-A-G-I. I'm just going through the biblical readings that I went through recently. Let me, right. let me pull that one up while y'all talk, brother. I'll yeah, find pull, pull that up, see if you can find a scripture that says that. Because I'm going to tell you, there's more stuff outside of the Bible that people believe that's in the Bible. What? People yeah. believe more things that's outside the Bible than what's actually in the Bible. I just bought the Book of Enoch on DVD last week. <laughs> hey, throw that shit in the trash, bro. <laughs> no, man, I love Denzel. Oh, my sir. grandma did too. <laughs> he said on DVD. There's actually a book called the Enoch, but it's not. It's it's not Bible based, bro. Yeah. And then what I did is I went to Discount Tires and I said I want those rims like Ezekiel had. And I want to keep on spinning and spinning. Spinning and spinning. That was a chariot in Ezekiel 1, bro. Oh. What they, what they call today uh, UFOs, that's what that was. All right, I'm about to give it to y'all, man. Uh, let me bring my screen back up. Here we go. It's, it's about how sorry. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's actually named in the scriptures. I don't think he's actually named. That so uh, you said UFOs, uh, like you talking about like the Teslas that's like $30,000 or which ones you talking about? No, nah, he, he's trying to make them, but no, we're talking about the, the, the chariots of the Lord. The, uh, that you were wheel, we, we, you read in Ezekiel one wheel upon wheel described how it looked, how they was, they was moving what the angels was riding in. Yeah. That's what, that's what that's talking about in Ezekiel. I have a lawsuit going right now with the History Channel uh, over a TV show called Ancient Aliens. Mm -hmm. um, and I was hired by a group of people uh, across the world to represent them uh, as far as, you know, copyrights, plagiarism, uh, and things of that sort, you know, vortexes, mm -hmm. all that type of thing. Right. <laughs> okay. You should win. Okay. Wait, wait. That's my bad. They saying Bal Balhasar is the king of Macedonia, mm -hmm. um, and so we saying that there's there's no record of this in the Bible. No, sir, not of the wise men. If 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 you're believing, that's one of his, the names. Those no, those I'm, men were Israelites. I'm reading those what is assumed research and you know right. record documentation, and, and that's and that's how white people do the the most lying. Okay, <laughs> just do their so-called research, just like 23andMe. And that's, I'm, that's funny you brought 23andMe up. How is it that in their extensive studies, right, they all come back to a black man. They say when they tra traced the Y chromosomal DNA, it all came back to a black man located in Africa, right? And then they, they set up what was known as um, haplogroups. You ever heard of haplogroups? Yeah. Okay, then they said, okay, so now we're tracing the haplogroups of all these people that left here and went there, and this is what your haplogroup is and what so-and-so's haplogroup is. And technically, whatever your father's haplogroup is, is who you are, right? If that's the case, why don't we all have the same haplogroup? They say, oh, is it a mutation? Well, then at what point in time does it mutate, and how is it that you can properly trace it? I oh, don't know, but I know they give me credit for a whole bunch of cousins. They gave me like 357 cousins already back. <laughs> they potentially, because of some slob now. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> they can't link. find out who killed Tupac or Biggie, but y'all already got me <laughs> 357 cousins <laughs> of, of indiscriminately that I can't sleep with now because y'all already <laughs> saying we got have some little special need children. Because, because of DNA, but hold on, hey, now I say this though, right? <laughs> you know, in amazement of science and, and this whole thing, it's really amazing to me because what are these dinosaurs at that they've been talking about? Mm. What are these bones at? What are these, what are these, uh, what are these Anunnaki's at that they've been talking about? Whoa! I, hey, 
I'm keeping it a buck, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we from what we allegedly can pull from in a short period of time. You know, they flipped my DNA in like three weeks. They told me like they told me like eight, eight weeks, but they did mine in three, came back and gave me the little spiel and the breakdown. But mm-hmm. I know it wasn't real at the end of the day because you gotta pull from the blood. Yeah, they they they're getting over, bro. They're getting over and people are, are are using it and thinking it's factual and it's not. And scriptures tells us about science. Give me that real quick. Yeah. Um, you got it? Go ahead. First Timothy chapter six and verse 20. Read that. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Uh-huh. Avoiding profane and vain babblings. Avoiding profane and vain babblings. Go ahead. And oppositions of science, falsely so called. They've been trying to use science to come against the truth for a long, long time. And think about it. Science is just a, a form of, 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 of their witchcraft that they're trying to create to discredit or disprove this Bible. Like I said again, once, once upon a time, science said that the earth was flat then it there it says the earth is round now I don't nobody know what the hell's going on now all of a sudden science don't know once upon a time science said we all the big bang theory is how everything happened all of a sudden no that's not how it happened how many times is science gonna switch up matter of fact how many times is my dna analysis gonna switch up on 23 and me and, <laughs> and you know how many times my stuff i, I get a notification yeah we've uh, further discovered blah 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 that doesn't happen about seven eight times Science is not it's not the answer to our problems, man. They don't know. Darwin, well, I believe Darwinism uh is starting to fade out. You know, so we we have a lot of pseudo-geneticists uh that are starting to pop up and things mm-hmm. of that. Sort. But I mean, I'm I think I'm more I, I think I'm more into alchemy in this technical age per se. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's the route you're going. <laughs> hey, bro. We're going to get you some medicine, bro. <laughs> We're going to get you some medicine, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, bro. Like I said, man, this, this thing, man, this platform, y'all got. Are y'all on Biblical Smoke? Not Biblical Smoke. Clubhouse? What's that? I, yeah, no, nah, I, 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 we're not on there. At, not not in the Talking Shit podcast platform, but I'm on there from time to time, man. I hear a lot of radicals on there doing some things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey, look, like I said, man, I definitely appreciate y'all having me on y'all's platform, bro. Yes, sir, man. This was a great show, man. I appreciate the offering, the blessing, the time. And again, man, tell them who you are and where to find you on social media. Yes, sir. So I'm Deacon Abiel with Israel United in Christ. Uh, you can check out our website, www.israelunite.org. Uh, all you got to do is just go to YouTube and type in the Israelites. You're going to find us. Okay, them brothers in purple and gold, you see us. IUIC, we, 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 we putting a dent in this earth right now. And it's because God has ordained us to come and put in this work. So we're trying to wake our people up, man, and then reach as many people as we can. And we understand everybody's not going to see eye to eye with us. It is what it is. We just here to give you the understanding, give you the facts. It's your choice whether or not you're going to serve God and do what the Lord said. You know, everybody got a choice to make. But uh, definitely check us out on YouTube. We also got a platform on Clubhouse called Biblical Smoke. Um, that's where a lot of people who want to get something off their chest, you can come here and come holler at us. Like I said, we used, we used to the smoke. We used to folks, you know, with the opposition and they thoughts and things of that nature. Um, but definitely come, you can meet us there. I would love to come back on this platform as well. Um, I wish next time y'all let me know so I can send our congregants a, a, a link, you know, get y'all some yeah. more views and stuff yeah. like that too. Yeah, uh, we could do that. We could do that, man. I, I, I would like that as well. And I'm gonna jump in on your, uh, on your clubhouse, I'm, I'm gonna lock in on that as well, and then I'm gonna share the link on of your clubhouse on the uh, on the uh, thread that I had yesterday on my Facebook. Like one of the gentlemen, uh, he he chimed in today. Um, well, two of them actually that was in that in that conversation. They they jumped on here today as well. You know what I mean? So it's definitely an interest. It's definitely an interest. But in, and on on a party note, man. Who's the head? Is there a center point of the church at the highest point? Y'all got a Vatican? 
Uh, so yeah, we have our, a hierarchy. We have, you know, we have structures. So, like I said, in, in, in our congregation, you have. What is Don't answer that question, though. I was just that was just that was just. I got you. That was rhetorical. I, got I just you. said that because I was just joking. Because I say, man, these boy like a snake. I can't find the head of the church nowhere located on this zone. Damn. So, for those who need to know, let them know. Who don't need to know, it is what it is. You feel Figure me? It out, huh? You right, exactly. you're right. Nah, but no priest, priest, priest and blessings, man, to all things, man. Hey, man, 10 seconds before I close the door. Oh, man. I appreciate it. I'm shit, I'm kind of afraid. I shit, I grew up with the nigga, but I don't know what to call him. I'm kind of afraid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> don't call him Corey. Oh well, no, we ain't even go. I don't even say the c word no more. <laughs> <laughs> My name ain't Clay. <laughs> My name ain't Clay. Mm, facts. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, brothers. Till next time, man. Peace. All right, brothers. Get I'll that be... curl out your head, boy. That's right. <laughs>